All right, here. People might come. Streaming? Yeah, you're already streaming. Okay. So, um, there are said people can tell you audio, video, and all that. All right, so, um, first of all, everybody, my name is Jessica, uh, but most people know me as Bella, Bella Aiko, because I've been live streaming for um, a few years in Occupy Oakland. I'm experienced with these protest scenarios. And um, I just wanted to kind of like share my experience and some of the tips that work for us as streamers that definitely helped us um, collect video evidence to exonerate a lot of innocent protesters who are facing trumped up charges. Um, but it also helped to like keep us safe within the movement and um, also like diversity of tactics, how we can really beat each other up if we don't see eye to eye, but we can't delegitimize anybody's form of protest. We gotta find a way to work together. And um, radical self-care, a lot of people don't think about um, how being out here all day, being hella emotional, dealing with the police, not drinking water, not eating, not sleeping, and how that affects your body and your mind and your ability to organize with each other and not start infighting and break down. So um, one of the first things we probably should talk about is the streaming because if shit hits the fan, I want people to be, at least be able to um, apply some of that stuff. And um, so when we talk about defensive streaming, typically we would have a streamer circle. Um, they're over there eating, so I can't really talk about it right now, but we would all sit there and talk and we would be live streaming so that everybody on our stream can see who else has the camera right now. We're telling you who we are. That's Ain't On Us Pro. I'm Bella Ego, that's Revolutionary Z. We're letting everybody know to not only who we are, but to tweet out, post out, put it on your social media, dating website, I don't care what you do, but bring attention to what's happening right now. And these are the people who are covering it and how it can be found. Um, we would always go out in teams of two or three and form a triangle when coming up to the police in volatile situations. That would allow us to have a perspective on the police, but at the same time have a perspective on the streamers and the perspective on the protest. So at any point in time, if anything happened, there would at least be one angle being covered. There are so many cameras out here, there is not any reason that there shouldn't be more than one perspective of any snatch and grab that happens. Um, another thing, though, is that COINTELPRO was a real thing for the CIA used um, to come into these types of actions and to break them apart. So we need to be very careful about doing the work for them. So, you know, um, in Oakland, you couldn't, like, uh, sit on a sidewalk in certain places. They would charge you with malicious obstruction of a throughway. Or, um, like, we couldn't feed people. We couldn't put out a table and feed people for free. They would get us with different legislation and literally like beat people up and kick over everything and take everything. So when those things happen, it's like, oh, you know, I'll be walking by, somebody will set up a table, but I'm looking at a bird, okay? Because I'm not doing the work for you. If you want this work, if you want to oppress us, then you're going to have to take the time out to do that yourself. You know what I mean? And that may go for um, different forms of protest. In Oakland, we had to stop the police march. Everybody was not on board with that. Um, but we also had other things so that people could protest in the way that they saw fit because nobody has the right to delegitimize your form of protest. Nobody has the right to shut you down and tell you that what you're feeling and what you need to express is not right, accurate, or or relevant. So, um, sorry, as far as the streaming is going, that's definitely something you need to be able to do. If you guys are using things like Ustream or Livestream or Bam User to uh, stream live and then upload later, you need to make sure to never let your film go for more than two hours. You need to stop, save it, and come back on. Otherwise, it is gonna be very difficult for you to save those videos and use them later in the event that you need the footage. Um, also, these websites will not save your videos forever. You'll be lucky, especially because there, is corp there are corporate interests here if they stay on for more than a week or so. So every night when you go home, you have to upload them to a more secure website, something like YouTube, um, where you have more of an ability to make sure that your videos will be there long term. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, does anybody have any questions about the video stuff before I keep reading about it? <laughs> anybody? Yeah. Yeah. They're all free. So Ustream um, is the letter U, uh, stream.tv. You can create your own channel and have different events. You can schedule the events so that 
you can broadcast it out on schedule and people who are following you will tune in right then. Um, Ustream does have a problem with ads. So if you have a web browser on your cell phone, you have to download the ad blocker or ghostery. If you download one of those add-ons for your web browser, it will stop the ads on Ustream for free instead of you having to pay $3.99 a month. It's like the letter U, stream. And then the ad blocker is either titled ad blocker or the best one is ghostery, uh, G-H-O-S-T-E-R-Y. Um, live stream is another one. But you have to understand these different platforms are only viewable on different devices. So some people who have Kindles can't view live stream, but they can view Ustream. Um, BAM user is really successful for people who have like a lot of memory because sometimes they'll put up those blockers where your cell phone reception will be blocked and you can't stream live. BAM user will save the uh, frames that have not been allowed to upload onto your phone. And then when you get to a secure internet connection, we'll upload everything and fill in the blanks so that you aren't missing anything. Um, there are apps on your phone to where it's a button that you've been arrested. You program the number that you want to be dialed immediately and all you do is hit that number, it goes off and your phone locks so that the police without a warrant cannot access any of your files. You have questions? Huh? <coughs> Which one? Oh, um, but I think it's um, called I've Been Arrested. <laughs> Arrest me. Hey, uh, People who are watching this stream right now, who are who are my followers and familiar with the app, can you find the name for me and uh, put it in the chat stream, please? Um, so what's happening is also when you stream on these apps, you have people who are watching you from across the world, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. They have the ability to chat with you while you're streaming. So they know what, you know, you know that what they're seeing, but they can also help you. So like a lot of you have seen me streaming and I've come and talked to you and asked you for your contact information so that the people watching will be able to get in contact with you in the event that streamers or anybody does a media blackout. They can still find you on your social media network, um, whatever network, and communicate with the people on the ground because CNN, MSNBC, ABC, KGO, all these motherfuckers are lying, okay? They're saying that the protesters are violent, that you're disrupting, you're tearing up the city, you're disrupting police work, you know what I mean? You're violent fucking criminal thugs and this, that, and the other, which we already know comes from the skin color, right? So what we need to do is control the narrative. And controlling the narrative means that we need to be strategic when filming things. If a motherfucker did throw a plastic bottle, we don't need to catch that because CNN did. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there is a trick that you can do on your phone, mm. browser, mm. so Bella. Oh. Hang on again. Okay. Because with all these phones out there, they're, they're uh, their default user stream is like Android or iPhone. Right, right. And you can go into the user stream and change it to desktop browsers, you can change it to uh, Google Chrome. And when you access these certain sites, so Firefox and Chrome are probably the best uh, right. browsers so to do that with, right? Right. So when you access these sites, you try to play the user stream, it'll say, uh, you need Adobe. Flash. Right, right, right. Right. But it's, it's going to totally bypass all that. Okay. Okay. And you change your user stream to like browser or desktop uh, or iPhone, and you be able to view it that way. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, but for people who are not technologically advanced enough, if if the download and the ad blockers will work for you, then there's that. But if not, then take a look at what he was saying, um, because and that actually doesn't work. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, Sorry, I'm losing my thoughts. Um, sorry. We waiting on somebody to find it. I'm getting arrested. Huh? I'm getting arrested. I'm getting arrested is the name of the app. You can program the number that you want to be contacted to send them a text message and or and or a video call, I believe, that lets them know that you've been arrested, along with the information that they would need to bail you out or find you in a second. So, um. 
that, that, and I think you can set it up for more than one night. So that's something that everybody probably should kind of have. Um, God, I'm getting something out. Anyway, I can't think of uh, the next thing I was about to say, but um, I'll come back to that if I can remember it. Uh, the next thing I kind of want to talk to you about was the diversity of tactics. Um, they are not allowing you guys to stand still and access your First Amendment right to self-expression, protest, redress of grievances, any of those things. There's not a mobility clause in the First Amendment. Um, <laughs> there's not a noise ordinance in the First Amendment. Those rights are not supposed to be infringed upon by the government at all. And so um, we can't effectively clash with them and fight with them because they have more guns than us. They are more organized than us. And no matter what, they can always bring more. We're simply not organized like that from coast to coast. We're just not. But what we can do is find other ways of protest that allow us to control the narrative while we control the cameras, right? So um, what we did with Occupy Oakland, I'm not saying that everybody has to do this, but I just want to give you the information you can take it and make it your own. We did shit like, you see how the kids got the, uh, made the signs today? It's very hard for the police to send on children making protest signs that are political messages. And then somehow tell everybody in the world that we were violent. You see what I'm saying? We had a thing called Chalky Pop. And we would go by the sidewalk shopping Walgreens, and that was so, whatever. And uh, we would draw faces of the people that had been murdered. We would have messages about social and economic justice. We would let the children come out and create that type of community where they were being exposed to the right type of education, not assimilation education. You understand? And uh, the police would depend on us. But the videos were damaging to the police department, and then they ended up having the threat of federal oversight um, because they continued to attack peaceful protesters, and it didn't matter with CNN and everybody else was saying because the Department of Justice was getting the emails from everybody else who was filmed. So you guys got to remember that the First Amendment and the freedom of press is only an extension of the freedom of speech. The members of the press do not have more rights than you. The police department does not have the right to legitimize them over you. That is complete and utter fucking bullshit. So you need to again. know that right. The freedom of press is the extension of the freedom of speech. No member of the press has more right than any one American citizen, period. They don't have the right to legitimize one form of media over the other. Because they have corporate backers and they got that big ass fucking thing on their truck and they got all this shit, then they can be of it. You see what I'm saying? When, when Al Jazeera got attacked by your police department, there was a lot of visibility about it, and then all of a sudden they get treated with. But then the fucking media who come out and want to report the truth, we can't even step off the sidewalk to come get the brief. Right. You see what I'm saying? They don't want the truth out. Right, because they're trying to control the narrative. Exactly. Because exactly. So what you, we got to do is find creative forms of protest to combat the shit that they're doing because they're making up the laws they got. Last night there was this woman. It was a, it was awesome. She had the uh, the, the hula hoop. She danced in one spot, but she was still moving. It was her creative protest. It was non-violent. Like, how violent could a light up who of her beat? You know what I mean? And it also has other connotations to it when you do things like that. We not letting you beat us down. Our spirit is still here. You know what I mean? Yesterday it was awesome. It was a wonderful show of strength. It was great that people were de-arresting individuals. There were enough people here to de-arrest everyone. But... <clears throat> But if you find these creative ways of protest, then it also shows that we are not the thugs and angry. They want to paint us as angry black people. That's just the angry niggas. That's the angry black people. Don't pay them no mind. So it's these other types of things that we can do that are creative, that allow us to express ourselves effectively, that don't allow for that narrative to be painted easily about us. You see what I'm saying? As a people. So, um, I was just about to say that. Do not fucking talk to the police. Don't talk to the media because they the police. Okay? They will listen to you, write down the shit you said, film you, and then go take a clip and make whatever you said fit what their story is. So then it goes, I'm afraid of the police. There's no justice here. We really need to do something about this. They take them words. There's no justice here. We really need to do something about this. And then they say, 
Oh, well, here goes 28-year-old St. Louis native that says the protesters are out of control and we really need to do something about this. Stop fucking talking to them. Don't talk to them they come over here talking about we want Don't some footage, but they weren't here when everything was happening. Nope. Where is your journalistic integrity, <laughs> right? And where is your willingness to come out and get the story for yourself? If you're not out here trying to get the story for yourself and you have no journalistic integrity, then you can find the free footage that every single person on here has uploaded and work with that. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Don't do their jobs for them because they get paid a lot of money to make y'all look like the enemy. Um, do not do that. They're not your friend. That's why you got your own camera. If the media was doing their job for you, your cameras wouldn't be necessary. This shit also wouldn't be 51 fucking days. Okay? So let's also remember that. Let's remember that black communities weren't even taught to read and write for so fucking long. The media was never for us. So don't, let's not forget that. Um, sorry. <laughs> One thing that other night that kind of was bothersome to me, um, we marched down to that plaza over there, and people were trying to get the jail support number out in case motherfuckers got arrested. You need to call for support. Like if we didn't catch the arrest and we didn't know you was in there, at least you would have a number to call, right? But we couldn't get the attention of everybody to do that. And so um, I don't know how many of you have heard of the People's Mic. Has anybody heard of the People's Mic here? Yeah, I have. Okay, mic check. All right, so um, what it is is an effective way to communicate when they won't allow you to have sound systems, when they won't allow you to have bull horns, when your voice is forced because you've been out here all day preaching to the choir, trying to get people to support you and shit like that. This is a way for you to maintain communication and be able to take control. So when I say mic check, y'all say mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. check. The bail number. Bail number, number is 314. 314. Is that louder? This also confuses the motherfuckers who want to say, let's pick out the leader because anybody can do the mic check. If you feel the need to be heard and the people around you feel like your message is important, then they gonna rise up and repeat after you. That way, we in communication, we not uh, um, we don't have one person leading us. We are a community that's organized and working towards change. You see what I'm saying? Communication is key. Um, they damn sure don't want you organized. The most dangerous thing in the world that they can do is allow all the footage to come up about we young, we strong, we marching all night long. Young black men educated standing up and trying to protect their community and becoming aware. It's one of the fucking most dangerous things they can do. It's another thing to show that we have some disenfranchised white, maybe some successful white, and the black people come together because they fucking tired of shit. That's dangerous. They don't want that to be matched in every fucking city across the U.S. Yeah, it is divided up. But another way that they keep you divided, I mean, not just that. But they keep it divided because you be all three hours of sleep for seven nights straight. You be out here and it's hot, but you got to do the bikes, you got to do the march, you got to get signed. Here come the police. Let me run down the plate. Let me do this. Now it's being seven hours. You ain't ate shit, but I have a clip bar and two sips of water. You slept for three hours. It's been two weeks. Now you're not as patient to talk with the young black mom. You're not as patient to deal with your young black brothers. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, nigga, I don't give a fuck. I ain't trying to hear that shit. No, no. Them the ones you need to be like that with. So you gotta take care of your mental stability because PTSD is some real shit. That's not weak. That's what happens when motherfuckers be in war and they see that kind of crazy shit. We at war. They give them military weapons to go to war with American citizens and they beat a black truck with fuck. So taking care of your mental health is not a weakness. Knowing that you guys need to come together and show solidarity and love and support for one another is not a weakness. Having it to where y'all can come together and say, today is decompression day. We gonna have an event where we come together and discuss the emotions that we've been dealing with, a part of this movement, and how to work through them as a community and push for it. That's not weak, that's strong as fuck. Being able to say I'm vulnerable and I have some issues and I'm looking towards my community so we can work together and uplift ourselves is exactly what they don't want to do. So that's the type of stuff we need to work towards. <laughs> um, Another thing, um, I think there was some issues with the General Assembly and Occupy Office. I like, a lot of it was, it emulated too closely the same process in City Hall. We don't need to recreate the government as a precedent. But the things about the GA that were cool, 
that it gave a platform for everybody to hear and speak and everybody to listen to. During Occupy Oakland, some things that worked for us that are things that, honestly, from the other side of the country, we've been trying to figure out how to, how to help here. We had the Finance Committee. We had the Tactical Action Committee. We had the Media Committee. People did food. You see what I'm saying? We had the interfaith tent. You can be Christian, you can be Catholic, you can be Muslim, you can be Buddhist. We don't give a fuck. What you are is my brother and sister in struggle. Here's a safe place for you to practice uh, your religion, if that's what you're going to do, and have the types of communication that we need to have to enter this community and be more effective. Like, we need to stop focusing as a community on the shit that separates us, because they're going to highlight that all day long. We've got to find a way to come together and be like, I don't give a fuck if he was wrong because he got that uniform on. Well, I don't give a fuck if he was wrong because this is my sister who's struggling right now. So you ain't taking her to jail. She ain't doing shit. What about there? Here. See what I'm saying? Um, so I'm not saying that this is what you guys need to do because people came to open and told us what we needed to do. It was like, you need to get the fuck out of here because you don't know shit about this. So, um, but what I am saying is I know a lot of people who want to donate to y'all but don't know where to do it. I know a lot of people that have donated in the beginning who don't know where the money is. Um, I know a lot of people who want to send tents and shit because y'all encampments got raided. We literally have storages full of tents and easy ups and all kind of shit that we saved from the raids. We don't know how to send them to y'all. But where is your supply committee? You see what I'm saying? We had workshops on how to build shields out of rubber made garbage bins and two by fours. Okay? We had workshops on street medics. How to be able to handle the gunshot wounds, the taser when they slam you to the fucking ground, tear gas, pepper bombs. We had training on all that because they will form a line and not let the ambulance through. They don't give a fuck about letting the fire department through. Mind you that they equal. They don't need to, they can come through the line. They not doing it. So if we want to effectively protect our community and make sure that we can push forward, these are types of things that we need to start to research. You know what I mean? Um, and I say our community because the only reason why they're going to point at me is because I'm a new face. But I'm black and I don't give a fuck. You see what I'm saying? So as a people everywhere, we need to get more organized and figure out a way to come together. Um, anyway, I have some stuff to slip my mind. I usually try to write shit down so I wouldn't. Uh, but if you guys have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The other thing, though, is I'm going to go home tomorrow. I'm trying to come back for uh, the 9th to the 13th. But what I can offer you guys is I will make press badges for every person who offers me their photo and the informa- the, the, the website or whatever where you post your videos and your pictures and your blogs, everything that you're doing to document. I will help you disseminate this information. I will give you a press badge under Bella Echo Media. I don't have terms and conditions except that you're not the fucking police for working with. <laughs> That's it. Amen. Okay? Um, this is some bullshit. You shouldn't have to have it, but it don't hurt to do it. I've been legitimized by the ACLU as a journalist. So just because they don't like how I look, that shit is illegal that I can't go over. It will also be illegal for you not to be able to go over. Why you can't hear what they're saying is some bullshit. Okay? So, um, okay, but that, you know, I, if I didn't have a plan to make and I wasn't a single mom of a one-year-old boy at home, I'm going to jail for that shit. In Oakland, I'm going to jail for that shit. I just couldn't do it here. So I'm like, some stuff, I'm sorry, it's better to die, what is it? Die on your feet than live on your knees? Whatever. Some shit is worth being arrested for. Exactly. Period. I feel like speaking on that subject, I feel like we need to we need to find those key people who are willing to take their risk. We need to get us a strong front line. If you're not willing to be on the front line, then you're not gonna be on the front line. We need to get a strong front line. If you're not willing to be on the front line, step to the back. And don't show nothing at the cops that's putting people on the front line and risk because that's the ones who let go. When you throw stuff, it's faces out here that they know. And that's the faces that they they go for. That's we why, had a that's, list. That's, They're not going for you, the person that's throwing something. That's They're why going they for the person know. that I, oh, I didn't see this person say this much. I didn't see this person do this yeah, much. This uh, I'm watching this video and I know this person doing this, so this person, I'm going to arrest. I don't care if this person that did it. We need to get a strong front line. And the, so, real, the 
the reason why that is because a lot of people don't know their, their rights and their laws. Exactly. So now they got to know when, their right workshop. So now right? when right. So now when they threaten arrest, a lot of people don't want to get involved with being arrested. So now they back up. Right. Not knowing that if they arrest you, they have no charge on the books to charge you with. Right. There, you there is go. no charge. Right. All right. Right. There is no charge. You standing right here, you protest and they arrest you. What is their charge? What about this? What they what, what we they did don't do want to do is sit in that cell for 24 hours. Check the y'all got the NLG here. Uh -huh. And they, we didn't have um, the, the, the other organization doing the bail, the National Lawyer Bill, the one with the green hat, Bill Davis. Um, they were doing all the bail for us. And uh, what we did with them, and, and this chapter here works with the San Francisco, Francisco chapter of the, uh, the uh, NLG. So they're not unfamiliar with this. Um, but we had compiled a list of people who are willing to be arrested and gave the NLG all of their information. And they also had all the information of the streamers who were always there. So you already knew who to contact for video footage, and you already knew the people who were willing to be arrested, and you already got all that information. So all of this, oh shit, who got arrested? How many people was it? We don't know what to do. Now we all fucking extra stressed out, but we were already hella stressed out. Now we all thinking straight and chaotic. Fuck that. You know what I mean? Like these are things that you can do to make sure that you are operating a little bit more effectively. So I'm like, this is my experience, and it's like the shit that, that I saw working in Occupy, but we implemented it too late. That's why we did not continue. Right. At the end, two Oakland police officers shot themselves in the fucking face. We were winning, you understand? But we wore ourselves hella ragged. We couldn't keep doing it. That's what I'm saying. The person who I loved the most and was always with, and if the police fucking with her and was going down type of shit, became my enemy because I couldn't even think straight no more. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning, I'm telling you, in the beginning I was writing blogs and articles and taking pictures and streaming, and then after a while, I couldn't do nothing but hold the camera because I couldn't even think straight. I was not, I wasn't taking care of myself. And so, while I'm sitting at home crying because I've got a little boy and this world is fucked up because I hate him because of the skin that he got from me, I just want y'all to succeed. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to come here and tell y'all what to do, um, but y'all got a hell of fucking support, man. Yeah, we do. Y'all really do. Yeah, we do. And so, anyway, um, I'm leaving and I gotta go, but I'm trying to come back. But him holding my camera is Nick. That's Sasha right over there. They gonna be here collecting the information. They can print the pen, print uh, the press badges out for y'all. Mm -hmm. They gonna give me the information so I can update the website and do all the shit from home. Even though I'm not here, I'm fighting with you. I'm not gonna stop. And there's hella people across this fucking country who not me. But y'all gotta organize more effectively because they fucking y'all up. Y'all yeah. winning, but they still fucking y'all yeah. up. So y'all gotta do this. Because they're they're controlling the information that's being put out. As long as, as long as you can control the information, then you can win a war. Because the more propaganda and disinformation that you put out about your enemies, then the weaker they are. Opinion is on your side, and you can you gonna win this war. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you, you gotta control the narrative. You gotta control the flow of information. And you can't get it through the mainstream media, alternative media. Because right now, this is a geopolitical war that's going on. And right now, we are in an information war. And they are losing that war. As long as you stay up current on events and stay militant and stay diligent in putting out your information, you can win this. Like she was just talking about, battle weary. They got battle weary. It's all about endurance. George Washington lost every fucking battle he, he fought, but he out endured the British. That's how he won. Endurance. Lost every battle. The only way he won that war was because he out endured them. The British got tired. Because right now, whether y'all know this or not, the other. Last month, when they, you had the paramilitary police on West Florissant, this is what they trained for. This is called urban warfare, mm -hmm. civil unrest. They trained for this. We never trained for this. While we're sitting at home watching Love and Hip Hop, they're training for this shit. You, know you have to know your laws. You have to know your rights. I know 10 people out here right now that could probably give you the last two seasons of Love and Hip Hop, but can't name the first 10 amendments. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
It's all about what you know, man. It's all about what you know. If you equip yourself with that, with that intellect, you're going to win. They don't want you to know, so they try to hide Exactly. I'm 33. I, I'm 33. And I know what I know about civil government. They taught me this shit in third grade. I remember this shit from third grade. Now they don't even teach this no more. Why? Because they phased it out and they don't want y'all to know. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They don't want you to know. And the big, uh, big new position or the CFR said it's better to kill a million people than it is to control them. And you can kill a million people with the lack of information because what you don't know can kill you. Knowledge is power. In every sense of the word, knowledge is power. So equip yourself with that knowledge and you'll be able to win this. What's going on now? Hold on. <clears throat> All right, everybody, I'm shutting down Bella's cam. Uh, I'm sure she'll be on very shortly. Actually, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so I'm just going to leave this thing alone. Okay. Uh, All right, y'all. Nick was streaming for me. I'm about to shut down for a minute. Um, I'm meeting with a few people in it. Can you tell me about your organization on camera? Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Operation Urban Renewal is dedicated to the economic and social development of the urban community and the empowerment of the youth. We believe that the youth should drive the movement of today to fuel the future of tomorrow. So we're dedicated to the economic and social development of the urban community, but through the empowerment of the youth. I mean, uh, if we don't care about the empowerment of our youth, then we're selling our future exactly. out. Exactly. You know, America has yet to see a urban youth movement, and that's what's needed today. It has always been the youth who has generated change and gave energy to change. But now they don't have a positive outlet for the energy that they have, and that's what we need to come together and do. Right now, Ferguson got the juice, and we want to use this to not just get a scholarship or to get a, 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 a non-profit organization or a court settlement. We want the urban renewal. We want urban renewal across America. We want the whole urban community to come together, regardless of race, class, creed, or color, come together to make a change on the bottom that can lead to the top. We want to take urban renewal from the city streets to the main streets to Wall Street. We want to found a, 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 a marketing company on Wall Street that's that's organized and ran by the youth. And we believe that cap, capitalist America listen when the youth organize for power and respect. Sorry, I'm shorter than you and it was a decline. <laughs> No, no, that's okay. You know, so we're trying to get, we're trying to politic for the youth in order to empower them to do things that need to be done. Do you have contact information you want to share with the people who are watching this? Yes, uh, you can go to operationurbanrenewal.org and we have a plan on there. Click on the right, click on the uh, tab at the right, up in the right corner where it says the plan. We have a six movie deal that we're trying to get off to fund our agenda to empower the youth. We're not just waiting on somebody to give it to us. We're trying to soldier our way down the economic path and up the economic path to make change. We're not catering or or, 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 or being sidetracked by government programs or any of those tricks of the past. You know, so, you know, while we cannot afford to end fight with anyone of our urban community, but we're not going to be relegated by the old guard tactics of yesterday. We're going to move urban renewal forward, and we're going to soldier urban renewal forward. So, right. so go to Are you okay? so so go to operationurbanrenewal.org, and you'll find out more about us. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right, y'all. It's oper operationurbanrenewal.org. Operationurbanrenewal.org. 
Um, and so y'all got to give me a couple minutes. I got a headache. I got to pee. I need to eat something. And then I'm going to come back on and finish streaming. Okay. So I'm going to wait for the lag to catch up. Then I'm going to shut down the stream and I'll be back and like, give me 20, 30 minutes unless something crazy jumps off. Then, you know, I'm on, I'm on. All right. <laughs> I need some contact information on you, though. I mean, uh... Huh, just, um, you got pen? Do I have a pen? Yeah. You know, but I... Is it, can you really shine your light on there so I can take a picture of that? Yeah, 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 hold on. I got a pen you can use if you need it. Awesome, thank you. Can you. Yeah, can you write him right there for me? Okay, can you write your contact information down? Yeah, I got you.